Well, it would seem that Leanne's proposal certainly fits into Largo's altruistic vision of Group W. Well, the scholarship fund is a great idea. And it's nice to know I'm not the only corporate type with a conscience. <laughs> well, might have been my idea. But as the CEO of Helmsco, my mother is the one who put the gears into action and brought the idea to you and Group W. Certainly wouldn't have happened if your father and my husband were still alive, that's for sure. What was it between those two? Something as dumb as a business disagreement. If John hadn't so skillfully handled the breakup, one of them would have killed the other. Over a business disagreement? It must have been a guy thing. Hey, Ralph. Hi. Stop the truck here. Okay, driver's down. Alex, take the wheel. Leon, you in position? Yes. Good. Champagne? Thanks. How do you enjoy running your own giant corporate conglomerate? It's like having 10 pounds of a can in a five pound bag. <laughs> <laughs> They've finished dinner. Stand by. Here we go. Better? Yeah. What about you? If your mother stepped down, would you be interested in taking over Helmsco from her? I guess. I mean, I think I could do it, but you know what it's like trying to live in the shadow of a legend. All you've got to do is make them think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> and sit in the best chair in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that's the difference between us, John. For you, business is life. And that's why I want you to take over Helmsco. Why not Leanne? I don't think she has the steel. She could grow into it. Maybe. But I can't wait. I've thought about this long and hard, John. I want you for the job. I already have a job here. I understand. But you'd be top dog. Please. I need to know soon. It's getting late. Maybe we should go, yeah? They're leaving now. You and Sylvia had quite a talk. Hmm? Yes, she was just looking for some uh, advice on business matters. Largo, do you mind accompanying these charming ladies down into the parking basement? I have some work I need to finish. Sure. Good. Thanks. Sylvia? John. Thanks. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was a lovely night. Nice seeing you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Does John ever stop? I'm beginning to think he's a workaholic. <laughs> oh, you know it. Oh, Largo, thank you so much for dinner. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks.
I have no idea who would do this. You and your mother are obvious targets for anyone looking to score a big ransom payoff. The unhelmed Joy Arden, one of our security experts. Don't worry, we'll get your mom back. I've spoken to your security people. They're going to be beefing up your personal protection. The FBI and the NYPD are through questioning us for now. They're going to let us know if there are any more problems. Leanne, I suggest we move you into the penthouse. You'll be more comfortable there. Good. Let's make sure our security's tied around Leanne. I'll join you guys in the penthouse in a few minutes. Joy, what happened to our security on this? Simon's looking into that as we speak. So the security guy said it was the Curie company's regular driver. Same guy had been on the job for years. It looked like a routine delivery. Are we able to track the van? Kerensky's on that. What about the surveillance cameras? Kerensky's on that too. How tight does our security have to be? Tell you what, Joyce hired three different consultants to evaluate our security. They all said the same thing. We've got the best security money can buy, but it can never be 100%. I know the company policy, Jeremy. No, I am not caving in. Yes, we can raise the 50 million. Look, this is not a matter for debate, and it's not something I want to discuss What's going on? Ransom demand was just called in to our lawyers. Kidnappers want 50 million. Ouch. Listen, I am sick and tired of being second-guessed all the time. Drop off details to come in a follow-up call. Did we get a call on tape? Mm -hmm. Kerensky got a copy from the FBI. My lawyer was just reminding me we have a very strict policy of never paying ransom. Uh, we have that at Group W2. It makes sense. That all changes when it's your mother's life. What do you want to do, Leon? Pay the ransom. That may not be the best idea at the moment. If we could stall for time, that would give us a chance to investigate. Well, it's easy for you to say, Largo. She's not your mother. I realize that, but uh, she's your mother, and that means a lot to Don't. Me. Don't patronize me. Leon, I think Largo's right this time. I don't care if he's right. I want my mother back. Look, all I'm saying is that well, there is no guarantee that paying the ransom will get her back safely. In fact, it's been known to have the opposite effect. Why is everybody ganging up on me? No one is Margaret. ganging up on me. Leanne! Leanne! Do we really have a, a policy of not paying ransom? Yeah. You'd make an exception for me, though, right? So, Hans, you were pretty rough back there. Why did you hit her? The bitch hit me first. Really? Yeah. Just a friendly warning. Yeah. He's worth far less than our hostage. What? This is a new look for you. I was in bed when you called. KGB All-Stars? It was our hockey team. No one ever passed to me. Why was that? I was right wing. Your jokes get better as you wake up. Park and grad surveillance tapes show four masked figures, one of them likely a woman, but nothing else that we didn't already know. What happened to the regular driver of the van? Well, my guess is that he was knocked unconscious after they got into the garage. He hasn't been found, so he's likely still in the van. I spoke with the dispatcher at the courier company. He knows the driver, and so we've got all the info we need on the van. NYPD has an APB out on it. That could take days. Don't courier companies usually put a transponder on the van so they can be tracked? Apparently, the kidnappers knew this, too, and they disconnected it. The dispatcher said that it went offline about a minute after they left the building. Damn. But I happen to know that the latest transponders have a redundancy system which piggybacks onto a cell phone line. Unless the um, kidnappers read the latest high-tech journals, they won't know that. Of course you do read them. If I can isolate the right frequencies, I may be able to track the van. Isn't it a little bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack? Yeah. 
I'm also going to take another shot in the dark and see if I can ID the voice that made the ransom demand. Did you find anything? Just bad news. The FBI lead investigator isn't exactly giving priority to this case. Wonderful. Miss Del Ferro. Have you heard? How about the kidnapping? Yeah. Yeah. But what I want to know is why Sylvie and Leanne Helms were being wined and dined by Winch and Sullivan in the first place. I heard something about a charity event. <laughs> it's never just about charity. Alicia, am I mistaken in my belief that you have a relationship with a member or three of the Helmsco board? Now, what do you take me for, Michelle? An alluring woman who is unafraid to use the guile she was so blessed with in any way she deems necessary. You flatter me. Always. Say, what are you doing for lunch? Let's see. Rudy, Alicia, listen, honey. I've been feeling so like lunging with you today. Oh, come on. You can see your wife tomorrow. Good. Usual time, favorite hotel? Perfect. Ciao. John, any work? Kiresky and Joy are isolating transponder frequencies. Do you have a few minutes? Sure. Come on in. Milk? No, thanks. So what's on your mind? I need to talk to you about your mother. My mother? What about her? There's a theory she's alive. There's been lots of wild theories about my mother. What's yours? That your mother is Sylvia Helms. Sylvia Helms? My mother? Like I said, it's only a theory, but there is some compelling evidence to support it. Like? The party line on the split between George Helms and Nereo Winch is that it was caused by a difference of opinions regarding mergers and acquisitions. And what was the real reason? Well, let's just say that there was a merger and acquisition of the personal kind. You mean Nereo and Sylvia? Conducted a merger, and nine months later, there was an acquisition. Me? Yeah. How much of this is theory and how much fact? I know that Sylvia had a child that was put up for adoption less than a year after George Helms accused your father of having an affair with her. Nereo never denied the affair. And all this happened? Around the time you were born. How come you never told me this? My years in law have taught me that even the strongest theory isn't a fact. So it didn't seem appropriate to talk to you about it. Even the present situation, however. Something wrong? Tell him. I just told Largo that Sylvia Helms may be his mother. Yes. Show it to my office, please. Leanne just arrived. We'll join you in a few minutes. Okay. How certain is this? It's a good possibility. That means that now, uh, Leanne is actually... Uh, Could be my half-sister. So what does it feel like to uh, lose a girlfriend and gain a sister? Not to mention a mother. I guess the same way I felt when I discovered that Nereo was my real father. Like I was hit by a train. That was gonna be a way to prove Sullivan's theory, right? Ask Sylvia. Seeing how we can't do that, why don't I get Krensky to check out blood types or any other genetic info he can get his hands on? I guess so. Let's go see Leanne. So 
So you want to do this on a need-to-know basis? Yeah. And who needs to know? Right now, only Kerensky. What about Joy? Uh, not for the moment. And Leanne? Absolutely not. Hi. How are you feeling? Not great. And I, I, I hate having a bodyguard shadowing me. It's for your own safety, Leanne. Look, I'm sorry if it seemed like we ganged up on you last night. I just felt that you weren't listening to me. I'm just trying to do what's best for your mother. I know that. But Largo, if anybody is going to make decisions about her safety, it's me. Fair enough. Any more word from the kidnappers? No. That's why I'm here. I'm going out of my mind. Why haven't they called yet? I'll tell you what. Come with us. I want you to see something. If you want Sylvia, it'll cost you fifty million dollars in cash. If you want to save things, return safely. It'll cost you fifty million dollars in cash. Delivery instructions. Instructions. Leanna Helms, Georgi Kurensky. Who works with Joy and Simon on security? Here. We're analyzing the voice of the person who phoned in the ransom demand. There's always a chance we'll get a match with the millions of voice prints that the National Security Agency keeps on file. We're also trying to track the van the kidnappers drove. How? Oh. The computer's executing a Boolean search for the cell frequencies the courier company uses. If we can match the frequencies, we can find the van. <clears throat> hey, how was lunch? Rewarding in many ways. Rumor over at Helmsco has it that Sylvia Helms is stepping down and that she plans to look outside the company for a successor to an old friend. Sullivan. Exactly. Oh, how interesting. And if he jumps ship, there'll be a vacuum that needs to be filled right here. Uh, you know, Alicia, you and I can help each other right here. You think so? And it's found something. Triangulating? That's JFK. We should check it out. You're not gonna tell the police? We may have a chance to take him by surprise. The cops will get in the way. But it's your call, if you want us to. No, no, it's okay. I'm coming with you. That's not a good idea, Leanne. Let's not forget that the kidnappers are after you as well. This could be very dangerous. We already know that they're armed. Well, that's not stopping you. Leanne, please. If we make one mistake here, your mother could get killed. Let's get ready. Me too. I hear breathing inside. All right, it looks good. Take a direct path. Simon sets the charge. Clean skin, you come. That. Let's do it. I don't know what he's doing. Why the hell hasn't Jimmy arranged the drop-off yet? I don't know. He's screwing it all up. It's like the 50 million means nothing to him. Hey. Hans! Don't do anything stupid, Hans! So, what are we looking at? I took these infrared photos of the kidnapper's van. They might show us a stray fingerprint. That's it. One of our kidnappers got careless. They always do. Now we'll cross-check the print with various police computer files. It's a lot less hit and miss than with the voice prints, but it'll take some time. Can we talk a minute? Sure. I really resented being left behind earlier. Look, Leanne, I understand how you feel. No! I don't think you do. This is my mother who's been kidnapped. This is the woman who brought me into the world. Who held me when I was scared. Who helped me with my homework. Listened when boys broke up with me. It was a rock when my dad died. I love her. 
love her, Largo. And I owe her everything. And I don't even know who my mother was. But that doesn't mean I don't understand how you feel. When I was a kid, I dreamed about the kind of love you and your mother have. Could I never had it? I'm sorry. Don't. Don't. But I want you to believe me when I say I will get Sylvia back safely. But I also believe it's way too dangerous for you to be with us. Well, maybe I should be the judge of that. You know, I'm a lot tougher than you yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Listen, this isn't about how tough you are. It's about the fact that the kidnappers wanted to take you as well. We're trying to keep you out of the line of fire. We got something. The fingerprint belongs to uh, Hans van Vlyman. His rap sheet suggests he lives in Brussels. His accent on the voice recording backs that up. And checking air traffic files for private charters or cargo flights to Brussels. He told you it was good. Here's a cargo flight that took off 12 hours ago. Four passengers in a coffin. Good place to hide a live body. Matches our profile. I think it's time to pay Mr. Von Blyman a visit in Brussels. Of course, I'll be staying here. It's like I sent me here. I'll keep you posted. Here. Oh. You're gonna pay for this. What did you say? Hello? Leanne Helms? Yes. We have your mother. Where? Brussels. Be here tomorrow with the money. We'll get in contact with you. I'll be there. With the money. Alone. Largo. What do you mean? Oh, something's really bothering him. He's catnapping. He only catnaps when he's really stressed out. I haven't noticed. You know what it is. You know what what is? And he told you not to tell me. Tell you what? You tell me. There's nothing to tell. Of course there is. You're squirming. <laughs> I'm not squirming. Simon. Your mouth is dry, your skin is flush, the pulse in your neck is pounding in any minute. Now, tiny beads of sweat will be popping out on your upper lip. Hmm. There's a possibility that Sylvia Helms may be Largo's mother. Judging by Interpol files, Hans Van Vlyman is a hired muscle most favored by Brussels' finest pimps. Oh, then we'll start in the red light district. I'll email his mugshot and check if the ladies work in the area. Listen, how about the other thing? Sylvia. Yeah? The adoption papers weren't filed in North America. Well, as near as I can tell, I was adopted somewhere in Europe. All I've been able to track down is Sylvia Helms' blood type, but it supports her being your mother. One other thing. I know you don't approve. But I was doing a little surfing past Helms Co.'s flimsy firewalls, right into the local area network, right into Sylvia Helms' file, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh. She's stepping down. Really? And guess who the leading candidate to replace her is? Go ahead. What's one more shock? John Sullivan. Thanks, Jorge. Everything okay? You won't believe this. 
First aid kit. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Han served me dinner. He hit me with the tray. I'll kill him. No, Jimmy, don't. Just take care. Where are you going? Just for a walk. I don't think so. Are you nuts? You almost killed her. With her dead, we can focus on the ransom. Don't forget what this is all about, Jimmy. With her dead, there is no ransom, stupid! I can't take any more risks with you, Hans. Hey, John, how you doing? How bad, you sir? Feeling fit, feeling good, you know, one with the universe. Okay. Hey, do you shoot skeet? Skeet? Skeet, you know, it keeps the senses sharp. We should do that sometime, just me and you, mano a mano, you know? Talk about the future. Skeet. Skeet. Think about it. Jeremy? Leanne? No, it, it doesn't matter where I am. Listen, I don't care which shady character you have to call, but I need to know where I can find a Hans Van Vlyman living in Brussels, and I need to know now, or you're fired. Just watch me. Look at him. Like a one-eyed cat peeking in a seafood store. Couldn't be happier. Question? I'm looking for this friend. Um, his name is Hans von Weimann. Seen him around? Never seen him? So when were you going to tell me? Tell you about what? About Sylvia. What about her? The fact that she may be a mother. I would open him sign and he can't keep a secret from me. I just want to know why you wouldn't tell me. Until I knew for sure I didn't want to tell anybody. Well, I'm just bringing it up because it might be a security issue. If you have big stakes in this, I need to know. Oh, well, according to Miss Fatih Passion over there, hmm. our friend Hans works in a very private, high-class gentleman's club outside Brussels called the Pink Tulip. Ooh, gentleman's club. Yeah, you know, uh, gentlemen with ladies? Yeah. It's a good place to hide a kidnap victim. Cops have probably already been paid off not to pay any attention. Simon, how do we get in without raising suspicions? Why are you asking me? Yeah, why are you asking Simon? He doesn't know the first thing about high class. Oh, excuse me, Miss Arden, for your information. I know a lot about high class. And how? I used to attend bar in a very high class establishment in Amsterdam. Oh. Well, the point is, they're always looking for willing ladies who could take care of themselves. She looks like she can take care of herself. The question is, though, does she look willing? And a good question it is. It's Leanne Helms. What? What the hell is she doing here? I don't know. Did you do this? No. Maybe it was Hans. I mean, he was impatient about the money. Damn, that idiot told her about this place. You think he told the cops? No. No, no, they'd already be here. Hmm. We got no choice. We gotta let her in. I'm 
anything for Hans van Vlyman. He'll be back later. But your mother is here. Ooh, tough girl. Just like your mom. I have the ransom money. I get my mother back, and you get the 50 million. Oh, you can keep your money. It's your mother I want. I think people choose cars to project an image of themselves. Now, for me, it's the Ferrari. A black, shiny Testarossa. What about you, Largo? Well, I never really thought of myself in terms of a car, Michelle. Maybe you should. You might learn something about yourself. Sure. Anyway, I'm a little pressed for time. I understand. I simply wanted to let you know that for far too long, there have been too many misunderstandings between you and me, and, well, I'm willing to bear the brunt of the blame for that. Well, it's not really an issue of blame, Michelle. Let's just move forward from here. My feeling exactly. Hey, man, when you get back, we should have dinner. Sounds great, man. It was Cardignac? Yeah, he wants to bear the hatchet. Wearing your head? Yeah. He knows about Sullivan. Well, of course he does. By the way, what are you going to do about this rumor? Until it's more than a rumor, nothing. Have you found the road? Yep, Simon was wrong. Have click that way. All right, all right, now. Can you, you know, sex yourself up a little bit before we get to the men's club? Simon, you're treading a very thin ice here. No, I mean it. Sexy girl shows up at their doorstep looking for work as hide on the spot. You go looking like you look now. You must have a pretty good relationship with your mother to do this. What are you talking about? Well, this took some guts, Leanne. The ransom is all there. I've done what you asked. Not yet. You expecting a new girl today? Let me see. Whoa, I am now. And is this smart? Well, look at her. She's drop-dead gorgeous. Besides, we could use some fresh talent around this place. I hope you know what you're doing, Jimmy. Leon, get the door and bring her in. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Looks like it worked, boys. I told you so. Jimmy. Come on. Come on. Jimmy, if you take her to the back room, I'll catch up with you. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. Something on your shoulder. Help! Leon, something's wrong. Get the others. They're at the main entrance. Hurry! They've got Leanne. This way. In there. Help me! Yeah, it's Largo. You all right? Is your mother here? I heard them say they're keeping her upstairs. All right. Simon, call the cops and take Leanne to safety. You and I go for Sylvia. Okay. Ooh. That way.
doing here? I'll explain later. Right now, we don't have much time. Stay in the car. Keep the doors locked. Anyone approaches me, take off, okay? I'll go back inside. Where's Simon when you need a thief? Done. Oh. Bad idea. Oh, oh. There's the jump. You can do it. I need the question answered. Are you my mother? What makes you say that? He had an affair with my father. It was a boy my age. Did Sullivan tell you this? Is it true? I look at you, and I wish I could say yes. Because it would make me very happy to know that a child of mine turned out to be like you. Instead of like me? Too bad, huh? Mom? Not exactly the poster boy for happiness you'd hope for. That's right, mommy dearest. Meet your real son. Hey, what'd you expect? Bounced around from foster homes to orphanages to the street. Drugs by age 12, jail at 14. Oh, but you'll be really happy to know that my life in crime has been profitable and I was able to pay enough people to track you down to tell you how I really feel about you. What about your father? Do you know who he is? In other words, are we related? <laughs> are you gonna have to share your gazillions with me? <laughs> but I really don't know the answer. How about it, Mom? Who was my father? I never even knew his name. Nerio and I were just friends. But my husband, George, he didn't leave us. He accused me of cheating on him. And then he... He broke off our engagement. I was completely devastated. And I kind of... I went kind of crazy. And one night I met this guy. We were both very drunk. And I, I never saw him again after that. Three months later, George and I were back together. Six months later, you were born. I let George convince me to put you up for adoption. It was the worst thing I've ever done. Oh, oh, you're really breaking my heart. What do you want from her? Well, first, I just wanted to tell her how much I really hated her. But I don't think that's good enough anymore. I want her dead. <laughs> Join I, we took care of the rest of the gang. Thanks. You're welcome. What are you wet? That was hot. So? So what? So what? I'm dying. No, no, she your mother or not? No. She's his mother. What? again? Make them think you know what you're talking about and sit in the best chair in the room? I mean, Largo's rules of running a giant corporation? Yeah, why? My mother is stepping down. Never thought she would, but uh, she's asked me to take over. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Yeah, I think. She said that my going to Brussels showed that I was pig-headed and reckless enough to successfully run a major multinational corporation. <laughs> 
you're right. I want to thank you. and that kind of chair to buy, uh, you know, where to find me. <laughs> so how do you want for me? Margo? Hey, John. Listen, I was wondering if you, uh, made up your mind yet. Made up my mind? Cardinac is beginning to drive me nuts with his I'm your best pal routine. I'm not sure I'm following you. Cartney has campaign to replace you if you decide to take over Helmscombe. Did Sylvia talk to you? No, she didn't have to. Let's just say the grapevine's been humming. I didn't tell you because I needed to take the time to think it through by myself. And then with the abduction and this whole Sylvia may be your mother thing, well, I figured you had enough on your mind. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, I now know I never would have taken it. I like what's happening here. And I like the people. Why would I leave? That's good. Look, something's been bugging me. Uh, should I have kept my big mouth shut about Sylvia being your mother? No, not at all. But it must have opened some old wounds. I remember how much I missed having a real childhood, a real family. How much I missed having a mother's love. That's something you'll never know. But I guess things didn't turn out so bad for me. I mean, when I look at how Sylvia's son turned out, I can't help but think how lucky I have been. Yeah. And it also made me think that my mother may still be alive. And that with any luck. Good night, John. Good night, Lord.